Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. A lot of locksmiths know when it comes to opening locks there's a gun that we use and this is called a pick gun but a lot of people probably wouldn't know there's a second gun we use and it looks the same, looks very similar and this is called an impression gun. So both can be used to unlock a lock. The way they work is different. One you works to manipulate it, the other one works to actually make a key so that you've got a key afterwards. So you would probably think to yourself, well, why don't you just use the impressioning gun all the time to make the key? That way you end up with the key at the end rather than just picking it and then having to make the key after that. Well, the truth is that the impressioning gun takes a lot longer and is a little bit harder to use than the snap pink gun. Well, it's probably a lot harder, actually. There's a lot more talent in it. There's a lot more finer detail. It's harder to see the detail. And this is what this video is about, basically introducing you to the impressioning gun. So let's put the snap pick gun, the Majestic, away. And um, I've got a cylinder here. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to um, show you the magnifying images of what we're achieving by using this one here. So the first thing we're going to need here is an impressioning file. This goes with the impressioning gun. One's yin and one's yang. So here's one right here, brand new and I'll just open it up. So this file here is, that's the part number, we do sell them on our lock shop, and uh, Swiss made LP1660-6-2, and basically it's a like a 200 long impressioning file that uh, has a point at the top and tapers down, used for metal, metal cutting. From um, eBay, I buy these handles, and that way we don't spike ourselves when uh, when we're using it so just jam that in there if it doesn't fit you might want to glue it I might have to glue that one in well I guess that's what you get for two dollars okay so now we have our our two tools we need a key blade and what we'll do is we'll set up a lock now I'm not going to run through and do like a, a 20 minute type video because in the uh, you know in the keeping of uh, you know instant gratification and quick videos, I'm sure a lot of people probably won't want to watch me impression up a, a 20 minute long PD cylinder. So what we'll do is we'll drop it down a couple of cylinders and uh, we'll do a quick example. That way you can see this gun in action and how it works. So just grab that one, just grab my Majestic. Is this cylinder even gonna open? This is just a cheap cylinder, a rusty old tension tool, and a pick gun I just pull off straight off the shelf. Probably should have got the cylinder ready before I started to make this video. Alright, let's just go for the cheating method and just pull this cap off here. See if it wants to play along that way. A little screwdriver, a little screwdriver. All right, there we go. Just going to dump everything so that we can get down to it. All right, so we're going to leave the last two pins and use a key blank here. Is there something wrong with this cylinder? Possibly. Yep. It's got a spring in there. See, that's got a rolled spring. That's why we couldn't pick it had issues. Okay, there we go. All right, let's pop a two. Two in the front. And uh, yeah, two and a three. Two and a three in the first chambers. I know what you're thinking, oh, but then you know what the combination is. Yeah, I do know what the combination is. And the reason we're doing this is because it is a demonstration on the tool, not my ability to impression. If you want to see that, I will do a nice long video, which will go for about probably about 20 minutes or an hour and we'll impression a whole heap of stuff but today we're not doing that might just uh, squeeze this uh, capping back just that way it's going to actually stay on and not fall apart on us one, two okay the cap is on we are good. I'll just put these parts back in because if not, we'll lose them and then we won't have them. And they might come in handy down the track. All right, also stop to the cylinder when you do have the correct key from, from falling apart. So I'll put that on the back just to 
There we go, okay. So we've got two pins in there now. Let's set our tool up. Let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of the pins. Okay, and let's get rid of all these. Bye bye, bye bye. Let me just clean my bench, I'll see how long I can keep it clean for. All right, so we'll back it off. This gun is very, very simple in the way it operates. So here's your little plate right here. It has a hole in the top, and that is to for the key to sit in. That's how it clamps. It clamps it, and it uses that hole, the, the key ring hole, to give it something to pull back on. Now, when you squeeze the trigger, this uh, punch, I guess, or post, goes forward. The key doesn't go forward, only the post goes forward. So it's a, just a very simple spring-loaded mechanism there. Nothing, nothing too big. These grooves here allow you to position where you want this plate to be and your key to be. So you can you can put the key in any orientation you wish. You could go this way, you could go upside down. Generally speaking, it's put together like this. Okay, and you need to line it up with the shoulder, not before, but just back from the shoulder. So a couple of millimeters back from the shoulder, that way you get the full, uh, full sort of uh, stroke of the gun. Okay. Keys in, keys nice and tight. Okay, so another part of this equation here is what a lot of people do is they use a lighter and we put soot along here. This helps us start off. It also helps blacken the key blade so that we can get our spacing and things along those lines. Okay, it's just a very quick example if you can see that. All right, so let's go in. Now we go in, we turn the light pressure and pull, pull, come back and we have a look at our marks. Let me put this on camera now so you, you too can, we can actually see. Okay. See if I can uh, get this to a point where you can actually see it. All right, so that what we're looking at now is the initial first scratching. So you can see where the pins have gone all the way in and scratched it, but you can definitely see two indications of where the actual pin is. So if you were to look at it, the first pin is here, the second pin is here. Okay, so now the camera's gonna vibrate everywhere. What I need to do is go ahead and put a little couple of notches on those two without making the camera go everywhere. So I'm gonna to have to do this off camera. Just bear with me for a second. Really nice sharp, sharp uh, file there. All right, let's go through and blacken it again. And the wind is not my friend. Okay, so now the key is blackened again. Let's go in and let's get another read. Applying pressure. Okay, back under the microscope and let's see what we got. So you can see the two spots that I uh, I filed up. We get that any clearer? Okay, and now I'm starting to see a pin impression right there. What you're looking for is that little dot right there, and you'd see a bit more of that dot there, but we're not in focus. See that tip of the pin right there? That's what we want. That's a perfectly good impressioning mark. So let's hit that. By the naked eye, to actually see those two is quite hard. Let's blacken again. This just helps us identify the marks. It's black, let's do it again. A little bit of pressure, slight pull, a little bit of pressure, slight pull. Okay, let's go through and see our marks now. Ooh, what have we got there? Okay. I like the mark there. And I like the mark there. Okay, so let's go for uh, another couple. I'll blacken this so the the cuts definitely stand out. Now there's a bit of an argument in the workshop saying that uh, no, you don't need to blacken it with a lighter. That's not how you do it. Well, that's the way I do it. Leave your comments down below if you feel that is normal. Or you do it or you don't do it. That's fine. Okay, so now let's just check those marks. Okay, looking at it through the camera now. Okay, so there's, uh, there's a good one there. 
Okay. I can see that. I can see them good there. So we're looking for that ding. That ding right uh, right there. See that ding? And there's another one, little one right about there. So let's hit them now and let's take them down and uh, let's go down with it. Couple of passes with the old impressioning file. Back to it. So this method does take a little bit of time, and I'm, that's why I'm only doing a two-pin, just to basically give the example of what's going on here. Okay, let's check our marks again. Okay, so look at that mark there. That's nice. And we can see the one, the first one, is now starting to go up the, tr it's starting to go up the garden trail. This one here is down the valley. So if it's going up the garden trail, it means it's on its way home. So we're not going to hit him. We're going to leave him alone. We'll go. Okay. Hit it again. Nice and black. And let's swap battery now. Okay, so we've got our two marks. Let's go for another impression. Oh, look at that. We're already turning. We're going to pull it just a little bit anyway. Just so we can see what's going on under the microscope. Okay, so there's the first one. So I'm looking at the first one, and I can only see it leading up the garden path. And I'm looking at uh, the second cut there, and you can quite clearly see that that has a ding in the valley. So, I'm going to just give that a little one, two, and I believe we should be quite nicely turning now. Okay, we're turning. We're turning nicely. Just a little bit of resistance, a little tiny bit. I can see there's a bit of a mark on the first. Okay, and then we have our key. And that's it. We have an impression these, uh, these two pins. Put it in. How well does that turn? Beautifully. All right, let's have a look at how it looks out of the cylinder. And I'll zoom in so that you can see exactly. Okay, just wait for the autofocus to clear up. There we go. We've got focus now. Okay. Key in. So we want to check the shear line and see how well we did. So the principle is the same for uh, doing multiples. And you can see them there. Look at that. They're perfect. Absolutely perfect. A little tad high. Not much. Not much, but definitely passable. Okay, so that was the example of the impressioning gun and how it works. Uh, it, look, there is many different people who have many different methods of how to do this. Okay, a lot of people use hand vice, they use vice groups, they use different types of tools. This one here, in my locksmithing career, yes, we had it originally, uh, with places I've worked. I haven't actually gone out and bought one now, I've actually gone out and bought one, because it's a skill that I'd probably like to do a little bit more, and also I'd like to show the apprentice on how to do it. And that's why we've got it. So basically, um, yeah, leave your comments down below. If you blacken, if you don't blacken, if you impression all the time, leave your comments what you what you feel or if, if there's anything I've missed out. And once again, thanks for watching.